A few moments later. I know that I had this Baphomet tattoo, right? Okay. So it got to come off. You know what I mean? I'm not about to have no mark of the beast, anything like that. It was really important for me, not only just for myself, but spiritually. And I really want to set an example for my daughter, Dream. You know, I want to make sure that, you know, anything that I do, like I want to be a positive reflection on her life and the generations to come. Angela, was there, was there a moment in particular where you said, you know, the things of this world are not fulfilling to me. Uh, you know, I need a higher purpose. Guys. Ooh. Guys. Okay, so we have a person. Her name is Angela White. Actually, apparently her stage name is uh, black china and uh, i must say this that i think it's a great thing that she had changed or based on what is being portrayed online that she has changed her life for the better and have decided to no longer live according to um, satan but according to god that i'm very happy to hear and of course, everyone who actually follows this channel called the Open Veil TV is also happy to hear that another person that was in the camp of Satan switched to the camp of God. That is always a great thing. Now, um, a lot of people, um, a lot of women sometimes have a change in their life because of their children. And this, you're going to be watching is one of those women. Let's take a listen. Yes, honestly, for me, I was like, like, this is too much. It's time for a change. This is not really who I am. And I, something just came over me, like the Holy Spirit came over me and I was like, you know what? I need to figure out what's my purpose in life. Like, why am I here? Like, and, and the way that I was living, I was like, you know, I, I don't like the way I, that I'm living. So I had to make a change so I could start walking into my own truth. And I feel like for me, that's very important. I'm okay. Um, there is something we have to talk about. The, and, and I'm not going to penalize her for saying this kind of thing because that's what she um, grew up believing all her life that... Um, there is something as my truth, your truth, um, this person's truth, and that person's truth, instead of the actual, the truth. And so, um, because she's a newly baptized, a newly transformed woman, which is very great, like, like the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things have passed away, behold, everything is made new. And so, in her case, black china it is a great news that she had changed her life but at the same time i want people to know in the biblical point of view there is no such thing as you walking or living in your truth you're either living according to the truth or you or you're living according to the lie for instance in um in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, it says, uh, actually, let me read from verse 17. It says, And I will wait upon the Lord that he hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, or, and unto wizards, and peep, or that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? For the living, for the living to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, to the law and to the testimony basically means to the law and to the prophets. You no, know, there's when Jesus was in the mouth of transfiguration, two people came to him: Moses and Elijah. The law and the prophet. 
or in the sense of the learn the testimony. So even though um Black China says um I need to to walk into my own truth, we know that this is not conducive to the word of God because the word of God teaches if you're not speaking according to the truth that God has given, then it is because they're not in them. But at the same time we have to be careful because she is a brand new baptized person and we hope that from this day forward she starts living according to the um according to her truth but let's hope that that truth she calls her truth is what god is giving to her little by little so that one day she can grow as a wonderful woman in jesus's name well let's move on about to go to vegas get the move the tattoo Yep, the reversals keep coming from Do Black China. <laughs> I'm still on my healing journey. On Sunday, the model who now goes by her birth name, Angela White, shared the process of getting this demonic tattoo removed from her hip. Y'all know that I had this Baphomet tattoo, right? <laughs> it got to come off, you know what I mean? I'm not about to have no Mark of the Beast, anything like that. In the caption, Black China explains Bamphamid's link to the occult and Satan, claiming the deity's goal is to create and spread chaos, mm. abuse, and torment his victims. Yep. When I first got um, the tattoo, that is not what it meant to me. You know what I mean? And regardless of what it is, I just don't want anything negative or demonic on my body anymore. In the clip... The okay. So let's let's talk about this part, the Baphomet tattoo. Um, well, as you know, the Bible doesn't actually mention. I, I, I looked everywhere to see if I could find the word Baphomet, but I couldn't find the Bible. So what does Baphomet mean? It's basically another term for Satan, with a the head the head of an animal, and the body of a human. For instance. Baphomet is not just a head of a goat, the head is a goat and then the blood is human. Let's take for example other Baphomet um, um, synonyms, I should say. Spider-Man, Ant-Man, um, Batman, Catwoman, um, Black Panther, Black Panther, um, what else? Any sort of movie where they, where they are doing a man, but also an animal. This is also considered Baphomet. It's not just the head of a goat and then the body of a human. The, the principle is, it is amalgamation of human body with animal, basically. So, Baphomet, yes. Now, funny thing is, she mentioned that Baphomet, which is attributed to Satan, wants to spread chaos and destroy people's life, which is exactly um, which is exactly what uh, the Bible actually teaches. But before we get to that, remember we're talking about to the law and to the prophet? Well, when she said that the Holy Spirit came upon her and, and yada yada, don't forget, the Holy Spirit can only talk about what came from Jesus Christ and the Father. The Holy Spirit cannot say whatever He wants to say. The Holy Spirit only talks about what the Father and Jesus says. That's why in John chapter 14, verse number 26, Jesus said, But the Comforter, or the, the, yeah, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things, and bring all things to remember to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So even the Holy Spirit doesn't speak his own truth. The Holy Spirit speaks according to what the Father and Jesus have said. Jesus when he came, he wasn't speaking his own truth. He was speaking whatever the Father said. The Holy Spirit now comes and then teaches whatever Jesus says. So the, so now that she realizes that, wait a minute, now, now because no, she's brand new and baptized, so she's still thinking of um, the, 
her own truth and stuff like that. But one day she's gonna realize it's, it's not my own truth. Or well, we hope that she continues to grow in Christ and realizes that it's not about my own truth, but about what the truth that God has given her. And talking about Baphomet and that Satan's purpose is to destroy humans' lives and basically, you know that. This is what God gave to the inhabitants of the world as a warning. Because in chapter 12 of Revelation, we have, there was a war in heaven, right? There was a war in heaven. And the Bible says, And there was war in heaven, verse number 7, Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angel, and prevailed not, neither was there place for found any more in, in, any more in heaven for them. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angel were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice in from heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For the, accus for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God, our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that were in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and to the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. So, when she mentioned that, Bethlehem is related to Satan, the devil, or the old serpent, which his purpose is to destroy people, that mean kill people, basically. Um, if you actually want to hear it again, this is basically what Satan e Satan does. Let me see if I can, I can actually... Uh, way. Yes, he, he creates chaos, abuse, and torments people. That's exactly what Satan does. Um, he just destroys people's lives so god told the earth be careful there is a devil coming to destroy your life you need to make sure you are on god so you don't let him make you one of his victims because at first it will start as a nice thing but later on it will become a black mamba with a deadly bite but let's move on actually no Bible says that the um, be sober and be vigilant for your adversary, the devil or Satan, like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let's keep on moving. It is. I just don't want anything negative or demonic on my body anymore. In the That's clip, good. the reality star packs up the car for her drive to Las Vegas with the help of her kiddo's six-year-old Dream, her daughter with her ex Rob Kardashian, and ten-year-old King Cairo, her son with another ex, Tyga. So this is going to be a great, 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 great experience. And honestly, like when I got baptized, I knew like God told me like, you do not need to be doing this. Like this is not, this is not why I put you here to be doing to degrade yourself because our bodies is a temple. Mm, is, oh, that. that phrase right there, your body's a temple. I assume, tell us about your thought process yes. on plastic surgery. Um, that this was an important step as well for you to go about reversing your plastic surgery. Okay, before she as far as goes on that part, let me actually me quickly say this. Yes, your body is a temple. People don't know that, but your body is a temple. Um, actually not, no. Let me actually let, let her finish first, and then we're going to talk about that part. Reversing the surgery, it was really, really important for me because what I had got was illegal um, silicone injections. And what happens is some girls, they get it, but for me, like sometimes I would kind of like fall like ill and fall. Hold on, guys, question. Which one of these you guys prefer? Oh, her. Do you want this one right here? Or do you prefer this one over there? Think about it. You have a... And that's why, it's, I be, that's why so many women... Uh, uh, when, when men tell women that we don't... We prefer them without, I guess, makeup, BBL, lips implant, um, breast implant, tummy tuck, 
um, chick whatever stuff and they think we are lying they think that's what made them attractive that makes you ugly which one of you would want that kind of woman right here on in the black or black or we do prefer the one right here she that's the one that's the woman without any um, fillers and implant and all that versus that one over there with all those fillers and implant who is more who's prettier who's prettier so you see ladies do you see why that thing is unnecessary it is yeah first of all it's it's not attractive and it's un it actually can kill you if it's done wrong but let's move on black um my bad angela white let's move on all kind of sick from it and the older that i get i'm starting I to realize like i want to be here for my kids i want to have you know my grandkids i want to be running around like i want to just get this out of my body because obviously it's going to in the long term make me sick and speaking okay so quickly oh Oh of her exes, Black China is also getting rid of okay. ink that links her that to one. them, lasering <laughs> off this Stevenson tattoo. It's Tyga's legal last name. Plus, this J tat, a tribute to her ex boyfriend, YBN Almighty J. Whether if you have an unwanted name, something like that, do a few sessions. <laughs> two right. Of those. <laughs> China shows off the removal process up close and personal, and let's just say, ouch. In the captions of her posts, China wrote that she is releasing all negative energy that is holding her back, adding, thank you God for saving me. Okay, so I never understood why people actually put tattoos on their bodies. I know one guy one, one guy told me that one time, the reason why he put he had tattoos was because he wanted to look um, tough. But that doesn't make you tough at all. It makes you weak. If you, it makes you, it makes you, it makes you weak. If you have to do such thing, to look tough, then you have no idea what tough means. First of all, let's actually read this from the let's actually read this from the Bible. When it comes to tattoos, the Bible says in first Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Remember that, that word he mentioned she mentioned? The temple? Yes. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man meaning men or women, like mankind, defiled the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Here is why God will destroy the person. It's not that God will destroy you physically, but by doing this, you are basically, God is like, oh, you don't want to listen to me? I'm going to remove myself from you and my protection. And that's how you actually get to destroy yourself. But of course, at the end of time, when God comes the second time or the, the, the third time, when you're going to wipe out, wipe out sin and wickedness, you are going to go with it. But your body is a temple. And the temple means you can either inhabit God's spirit or Satan's spirit. It's whichever one you want to choose. Number two, First Corinthians chapter six, chapter six, verse number nineteen and twenty. Actually, verse eighteen first. This says, "Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body." True. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that liveth, that is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? For ye are bought with a great price. Therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. In a sense, God saved her from Satan. And now, what, what is one way she can glorify God in her body and her spirit? By removing those tattoos. That is a great step toward not associating herself with ungodliness. You had a Baphomet, a satanic tattoo, you remove it. All your exes that are still in that satanic lifestyle, remove their names. Hey, what else could she have done? This is the best first step she can ever take. From her point of view, 
because this actually is something that is great number three tattooing yourself bible says do not actually no ye shall not um eat anything with the blood neither um leviticus chapter 19 verse 26 28 ye shall not eat anything with the blood neither shall ye use enchantment who enchantment nor observe times those astrologies and nonsense um, i'm a gemini i'm a, a cap like what kind of nonsense is this ye shall not round the corners of your head neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor print any marks upon you i am the lord what does that mean not print any marks upon you tattoos i I never understood why people actually tattoo themselves with people's name bible verses uh exes uh demons I, i never understood why but god is saying don't do any of this thing because that means you're defiling your body but let's move on and in the name of the holy ghost last week china revealed that she was baptized and reborn in may i'm doing good i'm uh, just feeling blessed right now and ever since she's been on a journey of finding herself i'm actually on my way to go get these fillers dissolved from my cheeks and from my jawline. Good. Most recently, China dissolved the fillers in her face, documenting the whole thing on Instagram. I'm just tired of, first of all, I'm tired of the look and it's just not flattering. It's just not what I look like. It like totally changed my face. face. And I'm just, I'm ready to get back to Angela. Like Black China, like Black China's Black China. You know what I mean? And I feel like, I've outgrown that, yeah, and it's just time for like a change, and I just want to, I just want to be good. And I came out so publicly because I want to let other women know that, that you can die from this. Um, I've had, you know, cases where I've, I've also obviously researched it, where girls um, can't reverse it, and now they have to like undergo a procedure where they cut you from your lower back and then have to scrape out everything. And you know, and for the women, it's really, it makes them really, really, really sad. And I I just wanna like warn women just not to do it. It's not worth it because you can possibly die from it. You could fall ill. It could travel to your lungs, mm. migrate to different parts of your body, discoloration, disfigurement. So ladies, like, just don't, just don't do it. Like, don't do it. And if you do decide to do like a BBL or any cosmetics, you know, make sure you do the research because everybody aren't, everybody isn't certified plastic surgeons and they can be injecting you with anything. You never know like what they're putting into into your body. Mm -hmm. It can be, yeah, it can be whatever. We don't know. You've had all this stuff taken out. Do you feel more or less beautiful? than you did before. I feel definitely more beautiful. I feel way, 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 way more beautiful. Like I feel lighter, I feel happier, I feel more confident, like more confident than ev- ever. Um, and then also too, I wanted to let y'all know how many CCs I took out. I took out 1,250 wow. CCs. Amazing. Eesh. That is a lot of, that is a lot of silicone. Oh. So. Yeah, I just want people Ouch. just to be like really like cautious. It's really not worth it, and, you know. And I got really honestly lucky. Yeah, I agree. Well, let me tell you something. Yeah. There is no better blessing than using the power of platform to spread information that's not always popular. Yes. Um, and I applaud you yes. for doing it. I thank you for doing it here, Angela. Thank you. And I wish you the best. Thank you. Uh, moving forward with your life, we're looking thank forward you. to what comes next. Um, here's the thing. Before I move on, I, I have to mention two th- one thing before that one. You remember when she was talking about um, removing the Baphomet and and um, all these things? I'm trying to find where she actually where she actually said it. Let's see. I know that I had this Baphomet tattoo, right? Okay. So it got to come off. You know what I mean? I'm not about to have no mark of the beast, anything like that. And okay. Remember she mentioned. 
that Baphomet story and she said, I don't want to have any no more of the beast, not anything like that. That part I almost forgot. <laughs> yes. And people will assume that having Baphomet is you have the mock of the beast. Actually, no. The mock of the beast is not about um, having a Baphomet um, tattoo on your body. And what is the mock of the beast? Let me actually read for you guys in the Bible what the mock of the beast is. So basically in chapter 13 of Revelation, John is looking and he sees a beast coming out of the sea. In Bible prophecy, the sea means a, a really populated area. Lots of people. Okay? And there is another part that's talk about uh, from verse 11 through verse 15. It talks about um, the earth out of the the beast of the earth. So the sea means populated area. So the earth is the opposite. It is a less populated area. Um, now, let me read to you from verse 11. No, yeah, from verse 11. Actually, I would like you guys to read the whole chapter. But I'm going to read from verse, I would say verse um, 11. John says, And I beheld another beast come, that's chapter 13 of Revelation. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a limb and spoke like a dragon. Basically talking about the United States of America. Two horns like a limb, but spoke like a, like a, like a dragon. There's basically an animal that is looked like a lamb, but is deadly like a dragon, which is called a bison. Um, and he exercises all the power of the first beast, beast, beast before him and causes the earth and them that which were therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The first beast basically is talking about the papal room or the Vatican. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the side of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by those miracles which he had power to do in the side of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the womb by the sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the would not worship the image of the beast should be killed now verse 16 that part right here is what we're going to talk about most. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, or six hundred six hundred and sixty-six. Now, what is the mark of the beast? Basically, the mark of the beast is something that is related to the beast. And if you can know what the beast is and know what the what the number of the what the man is, you can find out what the mark is. Basically. What is the name of the beast and what is the number of his name? Well, the number of his name, the name of the beast, is 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 characteristic. It's his character. The name of the beast and the number of the beast, of the of the the number of his name. So the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, and the number of the name of the beast. What is the name of the number of the beast? What is the name of the beast? Well. First, what is the beast? The beast is, like I said, the Vatican, people room. And I, I'm not going to go into deep details, but people room or Vatican City. The name of the beast is called what? Vicarious Philae Dei. The number of the name is basically 666. If you do the math, Vicarious Friday, that's Latin, or I think it's Roman names, Roman numerals. If you do that, you're going to find this 666. Basically, the man is the Pope of Rome. Basically. So what is the mark? 
the mug is whatever law that has to do with worshiping when the men or the people of Rome says to worship that's the mug basically Sunday maybe when they make Sunday law by law to worship by law that's basically the mark of the beast but in this case that's why I'm not going to go deep into it but in this case don't forget she talks about she wants people to understand that doing certain things will destroy your lives this is why in John chapter 14 whenever somebody first meets Christ the first thing they do is they try to give the message to other people so that they don't fall into that same uh, trap that they were in and that's why she did what she did because that's exactly what the woman at the well also did in John chapter 4 when the Samaritan lady when she went to get water in the in the, in the well right in the well and Jesus talked to her and Jesus basically told her everything he knew about her without even being around her but we know Jesus and everything. And she said to the people, when she realized, wait a minute, this might be the Christ. What did she say? She ran from her from the well. Okay. And she said to the people, the Bible says in John, the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 28, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? She went and preached basically to the whole village. Say, what a minute. I met somebody who told me everything I did. But he is Jew. How could I possible? Isn't that person the Christ? So what Angela what is doing basically is trying to shift people, women, from not looking at BBLs and tummy talk and lip filler and cheekbone filler and breast implant and all that nonsense but look the other way look to Jesus Christ instead don't be going to get this thing because this thing can actually kill you and yeah, indeed it has killed people and so that's why I'm very happy that whether it is whether she's doing it for, for clicks or whatever but I think at this moment because I don't know how to read hearts and I don't want to know either I think whatever she's doing if she's taking step to remove these things from, from that from her past I am very happy that she's decided to do that being baptized for the first time maybe and, I, and, and, and uh, being a new creature and then trying to remove all the satanic things from her that's a good step forward because that actually shows possibly she really wants to no longer be associated with the devil and his work. Guys, that was basically my take on that in biblical sense. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out. Again, it was The Open Bird TV. I will see you guys again. Until then, food for thought.